All right, so you got this movie called Drifting Home. I'm not even sure how to sum this up. So we got this dude named Kosuke, and we got this little girl named Natsume. Now, apparently they've been friends all their life, and they got a couple of friends in class that be picking on them. Rina's with her friend Yuri, but Rina has this crush on Kosuke, and Kosuke has his two guy best friends, Tatsuki and Yoshi. So there's your six main characters right there. There you go. So the thing is, the three guys are supposed to be going to this like abandoned building or whatever like that, supposed to be haunted. The thing is, Kosuke doesn't want to go over there and waste his time with this shit. So he's thinking to himself, why? Tatsuki's the main one that really wants to go, you know what I'm saying? He's worried about all these ghosts and stuff. He wants to be a ghost hunter. So there's no way to really get in because all the doors are pretty much locked except for this one door. So they end up sneaking in. So the reason why Kosuke doesn't really want to go there, it turns out that um, the only apartment complex they could get in was actually their grandpa's. Let's see, he used to actually live there. So they're going around looking for ghosts and shit. And they can't find nobody, but they go looking through closets, and all of a sudden, they see Natsumi in one of the closets. We're like, what the fuck are you doing here? Apparently, she's been coming here all the time. See, the place is serious to her, too, because we find out later on that she actually lived there also. Or kind of lived there. Because Kay's grandfather was actually like a father to her or something like that. I mean, even though she lives with her mom. Well, anyway, see, the thing is, Kay's grandfather passed away, and Natsume had this camera. Now, the symbolism behind the camera was that Natsume and the grandpa was going to give it to him for his birthday or whatever. But the situation with that gets a little dicey. I'll tell you about that later. So anyway, they go to the top of the rooftop and they start arguing about shit. Rina and Yuri are walking wherever they're walking and they see the boys up there. They're like, what the fuck are they doing? Then she finds out Kosuke's up there and she wants to go up there. So now all six of our guys are on top of the roof. Kosuke and Natsumi get into an argument about the camera that's struggling with it or whatever. During the struggle, she goes over the cliff and accidentally about to fall off. Kosuke's hanging on to her, but Natsumi lets go. And all of a sudden, we're like, oh shit, she's about to fall off the fucking roof. They're about to be done deal. Next thing you know, we wake up, the whole town is fucking flooded. And Natsumi gets back up and swings back up to the building. We're like, how the fuck did the town just get flooded all of a sudden? So basically, everybody's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And there's literally nothing around for miles. It's just ocean. So because Natsumi's been coming back to the apartment for so long, she actually stocks some supplies in there or whatever like that. So they got food, water, and everything like that. But they got to make that shit last because it ain't a whole lot. So all of a sudden, they're going around the building, and all of a sudden, they see some ghostly figure. We're like, what the fuck? I thought it was only the six of us there. But it turns out the guy's just some boy named Nopo. And Natsumi's like, Nopo's the dude that she was talking about. So we're like, okay. So he's real quiet. He don't really say a whole lot. So everybody's trying to figure out if they're really going to get home or not. Then they're trying to figure out if this water real. It's like, yo, where the fuck does this water, water even come from? Will we ever see, you know, see our parents again? Like, what's going on here? Now, Natsumi says she always has dreams like this, but she ends up waking back up. So when the scenery goes by, it seems like a fucking week has went by. Because they've been eating all the food and now they're starving. So we're thinking to ourselves, okay, this scenario is real. Like, they're actually out here in the water. So before all this, they seen like parts of buildings floating by and whatnot. We're like, what the heck is going on? So while everybody's starving and everything like that, Kosuke gets this idea. He's looking at like the terrain and territory and things that are coming by or whatever. And he knows they got to get some food soon. So the next building that comes by, he's like set up this antenna with this rope and he's going to like cling on to the building so he can go over there and get some food out of there. He ends up doing that. We find out the building is some type of department store, but they realize that the building actually has like vending machines at the top of it or something. So there you go. Food. But not to me ends up coming along with him anyway. So they couldn't break the vending machines, but apparently there was some food in the bag that was left over. So they get the bag and they go back over to their boat. I mean, their um, apartment complex, whatever. It wasn't a whole lot of food, but it was something. Some of that stuff was expired. But they're like, fuck that shit. We still got to eat. So Nazumi's always feeling like she's got to keep things together. She's got to hold the, bit, the, the crew together. You know what I'm saying? She can't cry about stuff. And then we get some backstory. Now, Kosuke and Natsume was supposed to go visit his grandfather because he was in the hospital for some reason. They got into some type of argument right when they got to the door Natsumi had left. Grandfather actually comes out of the door and tells Kay to go apologize to Natsumi. The thing was, he caught up to her, but he never really apologized. And while that was happening, his grandfather ended up dying. I think it was called a heart attack or cardiac arrest or something like that. And Natsumi blamed himself for herself for not letting him be there with his grandfather and stuff like that. And Natsumi always felt like grandpa was a real dad or whatever like that. You know, it made him feel like they had a home. Because her parents ended up getting divorced. They was, it was a brutal relationship. And then, like, the, the it was all a bunch of crying. She was always crying and stuff like that. So she thought to herself, well, crying doesn't do anything. It doesn't help anything. So that's why she's always trying to be strong and brave and stuff. All right, now back to current events. They think they see a town in the distance, and they're assuming it's their town. So they think they're getting closer to it, but as the days go by, they see the town getting further and further away. So we're like, what the fuck? Then Kazuke notices something about Nopo. All of a sudden, he's growing like grass off his arm. He's got like moss on his side of his face. We're like, what the fuck is he? We'll be thinking he's some type of monster or a hybrid or something. But even he doesn't even know who he is. So it was like, what? Then there's a situation where another building comes up. So, you know, they got to do their thing to get some food. This time, Kosuke, Nasume, and Nopo go over there to, to investigate for the food. It ends up being this random department store with, like, toy stores and all that stuff. So, basically, they got to find some food. Then it gets crazy because the building keeps ramming into their building. 
So they get some food, they get on the boat, and they're getting the heck out of there. But then niggas about to fall out the building and shit. Toski almost fell out the building. Yuri saved her, but then Yuri got in a position where she was about to fall off. Nasumi had to race over to the other side to climb the other side of the building so she could help Yuri or whatever like that. I'd say the whole sequence was fucking nuts. Rena's hoping Yuri will be all right after everybody gets back on the thing, but like she's still putting the blame on Natsumi for just being here in the first place. I'm like, I get it. We feel your pain, but stop acting like a damn brat. Then they notice the town is really getting further away, and then it gets to a point where they find out they end up going across a bunch of broken buildings or whatever like that. They're squeezing through there. But as they get through that little area, Yoshi ended up going to the basement and finding out there was water down in the damn basement. So apparently when the building was hit, hitting other buildings, it sprung a leak in the basement. And bottom line is their building's about to start sinking. So they got to find whatever building, the next building they can even latch on to, depending if any of them even start floating or whatever. They got to set up a raft or whatever like that. So they're doing all this stuff to set up this raft and it's starting to really start to sink. So they set up the raft, everybody gets on it, but Nopo ends up kicking them off the raft so he can stay there by himself and stay with the building. Now I'm thinking to myself, is he attached to this building? Does he know he's about to die soon? I mean, like, what's the deal? Not to me, he can't settle for that shit. So she ends up swimming back to the damn building. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to bring Kosuke back to swimming over there to her. But the thing is, Yoshi grabs Kosuke. He's like, no, man, it's too far out. We can't go back. But the reason she swam back over there anyway is because she's psychologically damaged. She's thinking that she needs to die too because she felt like she was the reason for Kosuke not being able to see a grandfather before he died. I mean, the way this story is going, I'm pretty sure there's some type of psychological message in here somewhere. So anyway, Kosuke's crying. He's sad. He couldn't help Natsumi and all this other stuff. Then all of a sudden, these goddamn blue lights keep flickering around, flashing around, all this other stuff. Next thing we see is something floating by them. It's like this big-ass Ferris wheel. So while Nopo and Natsumi are pretty much ready to settle for the end, all of a sudden the crew comes back with the Ferris wheel and they go going to rope it onto the thing so they can get the niggas out the building. So it's basically all our crew and then this other lady that was actually on the Ferris wheel to begin with. And she's got like moss all over her too and shit. So we're like, what the fuck is going on with these people with the moss and goddamn weeds and shit growing out of their body? So basically they try to save them, but the cable breaks, all types of shit. They're thinking Kosuke, Nasumi, and uh, Nopo are pretty much fucked, right? And then the wind start picking up. It's getting crazy. These niggas about to fall off the damn building. And Nopo saves both of them. And then all of a sudden, the blue uh, things are coming out of his body. It's like blue types of like fireflies or whatever the fuck it is. Next thing we know, the storm passed. Everybody's safe. We were like, where are their friends at? And all of a sudden, we see the Ferris wheel is right next to him and shit. And somehow, they were able to keep the building from sinking. So they get off the Ferris wheel and everybody gets right back onto their building. It's like, what? Then they end up crossing this area where it's like land, but it's like sparkling a little bit, but it's like moss land. It's not like a full-fledged land or whatever like that. Then they see a boy down there, and Nopo's like, all right, this is my stop. Y'all can't get off here, because if you get off here, you will never be able to get back home. Turns out the little boy down there is like one of those little moss face guys or whatever like that. So basically, Nopo jumps off and tells everybody bye or whatever like that. So it turns out the blue fireflies or whatever like that, he can actually use them. And he uses them to make the whole building float above the water and take them wherever they need to go to go back home. Next thing you know, all six of our guys are back on the roof and it's back to regular life because everything is back the way it's supposed to be. So you're thinking to yourself, were they just dreaming the whole time? Where the fuck did they go on this journey? And how did all six of them dream the same shit? So basically, Nasume reconciles with her mom and everything just went on like as if nothing happened. But I guess the rest of the crew learned valuable lessons that day or something. I'm sure there's a message in this movie somewhere, but I don't know exactly where I was supposed to take from this. Bottom line, see it for yourself. Drifting home on Netflix. Check it out.